What else, so, Glenwood Eastside, man? You know what the fuck going on, twin. <laughs> we ain't gonna play with you. At all. Double RMG, we back. Yeah. When I pull up. We right back here, man. You know what I'm talking about. We got my partner in the building. Thank you for pulling up man, on us, man. Already know it. SWAT team member as well as a dope solo artist, man. We got my man King Richie in the building. Man, I appreciate y'all. I appreciate y'all. Yeah, man. Thank you for pulling up, my brother. Anytime, anytime. You know what I'm saying? Every time we see you, it's yeah, always It's always respect. love. Love and You know respect, what I'm saying? Man. Always love. Um, I'm going I'm to throw a little curveball at you in the beginning. Okay. Because uh, I, I got a question. Like, I wanted to go. I ain't going all the way back. But I want to go back to, like, um, well, first I got to ask you this. Is your efforts with SWAT team in the music game, because you know they go way back. Yeah. Is that your first uh, professional efforts in the music business with SWAT team? Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Okay. Because actually, I'm make a long story short because it's sort of long, but yeah. I had just got out of prison. Mm. Rock, Rock hit me up. Rock like, man, I'm in a rap group now. I like we're gone somewhere. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> then he played it for me. And I was you like, ain't, you ain't was, believe it? I believe it, but I've never heard you rap. You, He was more so the player on the ladies, Von oh, Shway okay. type. He you, always you just ain't think he was in the music, music like that. Yeah. yeah. So he played it for me because it was SWAT Team in 107 at first. Uh, mm. I think it was a song like You Ain't Ready or something like that. Okay. Then when it became SWAT Team, you know, uh, I sat in the car with uh, Chosen and Flawless. Okay. I think it was me, Chosen, Flawless, and AK. And I had wrote a song in prison called Ain't No, Sh Ain't no Sunshine. Okay. I rapped that whole song to him. Uh, Maybe well, about a week later, they was like, man, you want to be in the group? I want to hear that, John. You know, so... And that was like one of my first you, beginning. I don't. I don't remember. I'm gonna be honest. This you, was you kind of answered my next question because that that was my setup for my next question. Yeah. What was you doing before you even started music? You was in prison. Well, like I'm, I'm saying, like right before. You know right before, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was right, right before. Uh, Can you speak on what that was about? Man, young and stupid. Go, going in, young and stupid. So did you tap into the writing when you was locked up? Like, well, that I've really always, into it? I've always wrote. I used to write poetry. Oh, so, so even before that, even before that, like okay. writing was all like essays and stuff like that. I I used to be in school writing essays for folks for money just because I love to write. Oh shit, you was always a writer. Then. Yeah, so I was always a writer, and it just sort of correlated start correlating in with the music mm. because I'm gonna tell you I used to write raps off of the old 3-6 Mafia the Mystic Styles 3-6 Mafia I ain't talking about the new when they got up into um, Project Pat and all, and all of them I'm talking about yeah. when it first, when start, first started. started and they were young I used to write that's why I tell a lot of people that in my book DJ Paul is really the first person to, that I heard sample music mm -hmm. To me, that's the sample king because DJ Paul been sampling Ashley Brothers and all of this. And because yeah. I've been writing to it, that's how I knew. Now, if they were doing that up north, I don't know. But as far yeah, as I just, heard a lot of people say they was influenced by uh, Hypnotized Minds and 3 6. Yeah, you know 3 6, uh, 8 Ball, MJG. Now, that's who was nice with the pen in my book 8 Ball. 8 Ball, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so that's who really got me to really get my pen game together. Because it was okay at first, but once I started listening to Abe, I'm like, man, he really be telling a story. Like, mm -hmm. you can what... picture, like even in his song, Mr. Big, you can picture that whole storyline of what he's rapping to you. So right. I was like, I took that and I just sort of ran with it after that. That's what's up. So now you now you on to the solo projects thing, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We know them SWATs done dropped and everything, dropped the dope album, same old SWAT. Shout out to SWAT team. 
And uh, now you on your solo shit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, talk about the uh, the mixtape that you dropping, Pressure. Okay, Pressure. Pressure basically is a lot of my, what well, how I want to say it, a lot of my, it's like basically like my insecurities, my scaredness of, or to approach certain things or to execute certain things. See, a lot of people don't know pressure was really me talking to myself. Mm. That's why when we was talking about respect, I was going through a point in my life where just wasn't nothing working. I was broke, wasn't nothing working. Trying to get money, wasn't nothing working. Mm. So when I made respect, the hook to respect, I was really talking to me. If you broke, that's your own fault. Nigga, get a check. I'm really talking to myself. That was mm. really me reflecting Motiv with myself. Motivating in the, in, yourself. Yeah, and reflecting with myself in the mirror. Oh, uh, okay. So that's how that up. song even came about for me to even be able to put on our project is SWAT team because but that's dope, yeah, because it resonates with a lot of people. Yeah, so I was really just like, I kept, you know how like you get in the point in your life where even though stuff ain't working, you still feel like you might be bullshitting just a little bit, like you could be doing just a little bit, and that's how I felt when I wrote Respect. It's like, I don't care what you say, you still not doing enough. Right. It's a lane out here, you just got to find it, but you, mm -hmm. you know, even if it's, Put your dog, go into business, or do other things. It's just, I was basically like talking to myself. Pressure is really me putting pressure on me. On yourself, yeah. On myself, because I remember one Christmas, okay, the, my first project was Masterpiece Theater, album, 22 songs. It was on that piff. We all know that piff down, whatever. That's, but a, that's what, a lot of tracks, too. What really pushed me was... I went to my grandma's house on Christmas, and my little cousin told me, "Cuz, big cuz, you hot. You may be one of the best rappers I know, but you are inconsistent. Mm. You will make a song or two and say this project coming out and don't push through with it. Mm. So got school by the lift, he, got, he gave you a real critique. Yeah. That, um, and, it, and it clicked with me. Constructive criticism. And most people get mad when people give you constructive criticism. One thing about me, even if I get mad in the moment, mm -hmm. I'm grown enough to call you back and be like, you know what, man, you was right. I yeah. was hot in the heat of the moment, but now that I calmed down and I really thought about it, I was like, damn, he actually right. It's definitely smart to listen to somebody you know look up to you. Though. Yeah. If you already know he look up to you and he a fan of your work, why wouldn't he give you his honest opinion? Yeah, you know and and saying? and he doing music now. Shout out to Blue Rose. That's you what know, I'm so when he told me that, that's what made me do them twenty two songs. Right. Cause I like he said I wasn't consistent enough. So you just, you just blacked out. Now, <laughs> I blacked out. Right. <laughs> he told me that. I went and listened to that Kanye and Jay Z niggas in Paris album yeah after listening to that watch whole the album throne. Yeah. watch the throne after listening to watch the throne i wrote the whole masterpiece theater wow all 22 you just songs blacked out with i the blacked pen. out with the pen and then everything didn't go right with that so now i'm back so it's like and i truthfully been sitting on pressure since last summer mm -hmm. so come to end this year and it's still not done everything that's still clicking my brain is what Lil Cuz said, yeah. damn, you hot, but you always bullshitting or you inconsistent. So I keep right. what he said. Right. But at the same time, you sitting on this one because you wanted to be right. Right. Yes. You know this time saying? I wanted to do a real, I was like, man, I got to do a real rollout. I got to do a podcast eventually. I got to. Yeah. Because I almost ready to start my own podcast for a minute because I know what it takes now but you tapping into more of the business side now, you know what I'm saying? Because sometimes less is more. Yeah. It's just all about, you know, it ain't about the fact that it's a smaller project. It's about what you said. It's about the rollout. It's about how you roll it out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, it, the, and the effort and the work you put into that project. Yeah. And it's like, for one, I took a year off everything to get my bid, get my house in order. Yeah. So, while everybody was pouring 1942 down their throat during the pandemic, 
I opened three corporations, a trucking company, a general warehouse and storage company, and a vending machine company. Oh, word? Okay. Yeah. So, so you got businesses out there. That's what actually yeah. helped me in the business of the music. I know that a music that a record deal ain't nothing but a business loan. Now it may be a fucked up structured business loan, right. but at the end of the day, it's a business loan. Right. So a lot of artists need to understand. And that. me learning, me setting up a business model and dealing with business myself, having to talk to brokers, having to talk to banks, having to go in here and talk to uh, financial planners and uh, what's what's the other people I be having to talk to? Private wealth management, mm -hmm. just to show me how to critique my business and put things in place to set up and uh, asset protection, talking to, to people about life insurance policies. It really made me turn back around to the music like, oh, I know what's going on now. Okay, well, let me let me come off the top with this question then since you said that, because some people may ask this. With all that in place and you got your businesses rolling, multiple streams of income, why even fuck with the music? Because that's my passion. Business, not my passion. Even though I love the business world, business world just like the dope game, truthfully to me. Mm -hmm. About supply and demand. If you got it and they want it, they gonna buy it. So you really have a true passion for this yeah, music? Yeah, the music, shit. yeah, I really have a true passion because like I said, at this point, man, the music not even about the money for me. And, and especially the writing. Yes. You and got some shit that you want her. I got some stuff I want her from the last project. And yeah. I don't feel like, even though I did put it on that pill, that very first project, I still don't feel like I reached its full potential because I didn't shoot visuals. Yeah. I didn't have a team around me, like meeting y'all. I didn't have a team around me to help me push it. Mm -hmm. I didn't have, and I love my little cousins to death, but sometimes I be feeling like, they gonna tell me some shit hot even if it's not because right. I'm big cub. Not saying that that's what they do, yeah. But it's just sometimes you want an outside voice just to make sure mm -hmm. that everybody around you just not yes men because yeah. we all fuck with each other or we all homeboys. We all cool. Sometimes you need that right. outside structure. Well, I can definitely tell you as long as I've been fucking with music like. It's not too late. Like some of that stuff, you could re-release, revisit, mm -hmm. restructure, and re-release some of that stuff. You know what I'm saying? That you still got. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Another thing, when you're an artist, you can always switch the music up. Yeah. But that writing, you know what I'm saying? That especially if you knew you young, if you know you wrote something perfect, mm -hmm. but the track might be outdated, you can take that that writing and put it on a whole nother track. And see, and, that's you know what, what I was dealing with. And re-release it and won't nobody even know. And see, that's what I was dealing with. I was yeah. like, damn. Because I had thought about taking some verses off a couple of them Masterpiece Theater songs. Yeah. Because the final album going to be Black Hollywood, but I wanted it to be 20 times better than Masterpiece Theater was, even though mm -hmm. ain't too many people heard it. But I know to myself right. where Masterpiece Theater was and where I actually could have went with it had I had a budget, a team, and all of that. So I thought about that, but then some of them songs just... It's probably more so me. Some of those songs just such classics to me. I almost just rather release the whole thing Re and maybe the whole remix thing. it or something like that. Cause I was in a whole different sector in my life. Yeah. When I wrote that, like we was really having at that point. Like even though it was out the streets, we was really having. I was able to do what I wanted to do every day of the week. I ain't got to worry mm -hmm. about nothing. And now that I'm a businessman, I can still do what I want, but I can't. Because, you know, I, I still, my life right. has to be structured now. I have to exactly. be up by six, six or seven o'clock I'm up. Yeah. I don't care if I went to sleep at four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Latest you, you out. Done, you done transitioned from the streets to the to real the business. business. So the I'm latest saying? I'm up is four. maybe 8.30. Yeah, it's a totally different life. The way my mind set up now, for one, I know no one wants to handle business after lunch. Mm 
I just learned that from my job. <laughs> after lunch, nobody wants to talk to you after. They'll talk to you because that's their right. job. But that same effort is not not there. given <laughs> as it it is it is from nine to twelve. Right. Yeah. Just sure. and so now it's just like my priorities different, my lifestyle different. I'm not trying. It, yeah, I still be up late at night, but if I don't have to be up late at night. I don't be up late night because I still need to get up and handle some type of business in the morning or I feel unproductive right. because I know and I have people who be like, yeah, I sleep till 11, 12 o'clock. I can't. Right. My body won't even let me sleep. I've tried it. It's been days where I say, okay, I ain't finna do nothing and try to sleep. And can't even do it. Man, I'm up by 9 o'clock at the latest, <laughs> ready to take over the world. Yeah. And I feel like that's just because I got a lot of unfinished business from the business world to the music, just to my even my personal life. Yeah. Now, how many uh, tracks is on Pressure? Okay. On Pressure, it's six on there, but I promise you. You got the EP. Okay. All six are banging. Every lad, I did. Matter of fact, I did it on purpose. I I went through all of the songs mm -hmm. that I had because it's like twenty songs that I recorded. Really, more than that, but a lot of them I'm, may have a verse, no oh, second you, verse. You on you on your Michael Jackson shit? They say that's a, that's what he used to do. Make a whole bunch of songs and yeah. just and just pick a few out of all them damn songs. I still got right. songs that I haven't even put a verse on. Like sometimes right. I go to, uh, cause I got two, as far as uh, people is on the team that, that I let engineer my music, I got two, my brother Smiley and mm -hmm. my cuz P, Prophet. Okay. And it's stuff in his, com in Prophet computer that just got hooks. It may be 10, 15, you get to the point where he like, look, you done recorded enough, go on put some verses on it. And then I be like, no, nah, that still ain't it. And it may have been good to me at the time, but the way music is constantly changing and how fast it's changing, mm -hmm. it's like, I feel like if I wait a six month span and I haven't wrote a verse to it, it's just it's outdated and just leave it there because I, okay, the way I write music, mm -hmm. my process to writing is different than a lot of other people. I can hear a beat and see the video before I've even wrote the song. Mm. In my mind, right. I can see myself. Yeah, you can see the visual, yeah. And I can see the whole visual, and it's been times that I go to sleep and the beat will be playing in my dreams, and I get up, write the whole song, go back to sleep, 3, 4 in the morning. Wow. That how, matter of fact, I got an old song called Wetter. It was like an R&B person on the hook. And for the life of me, I just couldn't think of nothing to write on it. Man, I went to sleep one night, that whole beat. And the dream I had was I was in the drop top with a chick, Ryan, and that song was playing in the background. I woke up 3.30 in the morning, wrote the whole song, went back to sleep. <laughs> that was the dream? That, that was, was my dream. dream. Was about... That's what. That's the that, exact that dream. That sounded like a video, though. And that you was could, the dream. You, you could make you could make that the uh, the video. I, I, for I the, forgot the word they use. The treatment. The treatment. You could make that the treatment to the video. And that's and, literally and, what. And make a video out of that. And that's yeah. literally. And I, I'm gonna be honest. I was so fresh as far as being a solo artist that I didn't even think about it that way. Yeah. To me, it was just that's the motivation I needed to write the song. Now the song right. done. Cool. We gonna do it. Put it out. I yeah. wasn't even thinking. Be honest, I didn't even know what a treatment for a video was at that point when I wrote that song. Exactly. I yeah. didn't even know if you'd have told me treatment for a video, it went. <laughs> so, so yeah. the single but, that you got coming out, uh, Pop Out. Like, what's that about? Like, Pop Out is because <laughs> it's sort of funny you asked that question. Pop Out was wrote because. When I took that year, maybe year and a half off, I did a lot of capping to a certain degree of, yeah, I'm going to be here, don't show up. They put me <laughs> on a flyer here. I don't come. Because in my mind, 
that's when I had to just stop and put everything in the business aspect. If I ain't gonna come, just not gonna come. Not just I didn't want to let nobody down because it's mm -hmm. like once you get people to dealing with you with the music. Once you start encouraging people, so it gets to the point where they're not even at. Like, I've been asked to come to yacht parties, come do this, come do that. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to come. Knowing good and well, I'm still on my mission in my personal life. Right. Knowing I can't make these events right, right now. Right, right. I got to sit down right now, but I didn't want it. I didn't so even want it. So it was in your heart to do it, but you knew that shit wasn't on your schedule, schedule at the moment. At the yeah. moment, and it's like. But you were still capping about popping but now, out. Yeah. So now <laughs> it's like, okay, yeah, I'm outside for real. Now let's talk. Right. It's yeah. like. That, so that's how you came up with, with, the, concept. with, the, with the concept. Because you was like, I'm really out here now. Yeah, and at the same time, if you ain't part of the team, I don't think I trust is my switch because I don't, I don't, if I don't know you, I just don't know you now. Am I willing to get to meet people? Of course. You know what I'm saying? But it still won't be the love like how I have with y'all, where I built the relationship, you know what I'm saying? Because that's what life is all about. Not just the music, not just the being. Life is about relationships relationship, yeah. and what you can build. Yeah. So if I haven't built nothing with you, yes, I can be cordial. I'm cordial with my enemies. I'm cordial with people that don't like me. Uh, you know what made me become like that? The real business world. I right. sat down and had discussions with people that I know didn't like me. Even right. if it just was for the color of my skin, man, how he this coming and know all this. I'm not supposed to know about cash value life insurance policy. And I'm talking about I've been talking to them about trust accounts. A mm -hmm. lot a lot of this is new to a lot of people. I've been doing this since 2008, 8, 9, and 10. Mm -hmm. UCCs, private wealth management. I've been going. I went and talked to Christopher Fong, how's that son trust of private wealth management down there in 2011. Mm. And it's a lot of them that... I know you didn't like me just for the fact of what I knew and how I'm coming to you with the look I had. I know I got a hood look. No matter how much I try to chameleon it, I will put on, <laughs> I will put on a blazer suit, right. you know, but the stench is but still. But you know, you know what they thinking at yeah, the, the end of the day. Yeah. yeah, and the stench still on me. No matter yeah. how much I try to hide it, even started changing my vocabulary with the way I talk. I try to take a lot of that hood slang out and use it in its purpose. Yeah, cause because you're in a professional setting. Yeah. So I've done business with people that didn't like me, that didn't even like my skin tone, telling me what I can and can't do when, and I'm gonna tell you what's crazy, it's always us. I had a person of my color tell me what I can't do after I just talked to this white man and he told me I could do it. Right. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So that's just how that's I took that, it. Yeah, that's that negative shit that we do to each other. other. So, you know. I put all it and I correlated the whole, in my mind, I took everything I learned from the business world and put it into the music, finally. That's what's up. Because I finally learned business and I think that's the problem with a lot of these artists. Y'all got the talent, a lot of y'all very talented. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the business, it's hard for me to sit back and be like, well, damn, I feel sorry for you because you got screwed. Bro, at the end of the day, this is business. Mm -hmm. That's why I call it the music business. That's crazy because we go to a lot of uh, expos with, uh, and they, everybody say the same thing. Get your business in order first before your music. Mm -hmm. Everybody just wants the music. Just like saying, I want to be famous and rich. You know, they'd rather be famous instead of rich. Rich, yeah. You know what I'm saying? The rich part is the business. Yeah, that's sure. The, that, that's, that's the business part. You want to be rich, that's the business part. Famous, that's just going, hey, man, I cop your meal for you. You know, that's just being famous and people waving at you. Oh, I know you. Let me get a picture. Picture, yeah. You know, that's what all people striving for right now is famous. And attention. And I just. But we got much, we got more that we going to kick it with you about. We're going to take a little break right now. When we come back, we're going to come back with more King Richie, y'all. You know so what I'm let's, So let's tap into that then. You say you real heavy in the strip clubs and you just start being there on a regular. Regular. Like what, what made you do that? Because one... Them hoes. <laughs> <laughs> besides, besides the obvious. Besides I'm gonna tell them you, hoes. Like I'm going to tell you, you why. To, it, it's, it's a couple of real reasons, though, yeah. business-wise. What, what was you thinking? What See, was you trying to accomplish? one thing that I know... Is the women by the music. Yeah. 
Yeah. Niggas yeah. gonna buy whatever that, the women say pop. Yeah. That's true. That's so true. and Pac Tupac said that a long time, time ago. ago. So I, okay, this was one he of the said, reasons. market to the women and the men gonna buy what the women, women want. what they want. Yeah. But this was one of my biggest reasons. Weak ninjas. Because <laughs> after Masterpiece Theater, okay, after Masterpiece Theater, you know, this back in back in my old life, we were traveling whatever got busted. That's neither here nor there. Right. After we got busted, you know, that's why Masterpiece Theater ended up on that pill. Because after we got busted, I got locked up. I had right. to sit in there for a minute. You couldn't even promote the shit. You just had to so put it So by the time on, I got, there. okay, yeah. so after we got busted, I got out. The money went, to, okay, I tried to keep the business going. We're going to keep it real. I tried right. to keep the business going, but I didn't realize yeah. that all of our customers were coming from everywhere. Right. Kennesaw here, there, and I tried it. I'm like, hold on, I'm burning more gas than the money I'm making. So I'm mm. like, you know what? Let's just dead that. I done waited so long with Masterpiece Theater. I didn't buy all the beats. So I'm like, you know what? Let's just get it away, put it out for free. So that way mm -hmm. it can't be no complaints because I ain't making no money from it. I didn't care about the money at that point. I just want someone to hear these 22 songs because... I went and recorded. Now, was was Masterpiece Theater the project that you was pushing when you decided to go heavy in the strip club, or had you went on to another project by then? See, Masterpiece Theater was the project before I started going to the strip club, and one of that's what I was finna, that's what I meant to get to. Mm -hmm. One of the main reasons I went to the strip club because I needed to hear the new sound. Oh, okay. You that was, was one of the you main reasons. I just used to go in there. You, you were scouting. You was trying to see. I'm, I'm what watching was, people what perform. Was I'm yeah. trying to see who popping. I'm trying to see. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a lot of times I go, and I'm going to spend my money because I'm there. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times I'm really just evaluating. Right. I want to see who performed. I want to see what they song sound like. I want to see what the sound is. Mm -hmm. The sound ain't. If I'd have struck with Masterpiece Theater in 2011, 12, when I was supposed to, yeah, that could have been one of the sounds. But now that I waited till 2015 to put you it out, that wasn't it. That no wasn't it. And it's yeah. good as far as classical to me, but I need to hear what the sound is now. So for me going to the strip club, like, yeah, damn near every day. Is pressure a reflection of that? Yeah. You scouting that and listening to Listening it? and listening. Okay. And I'm going to be honest. To get in that mind frame, I listen to, it's going to sound crazy, but I listen to nothing but Lil Durk and Future for like five months straight. Damn, for real? And the reason I listen then to was it them is. them two of the main artists they was bumping in the strip clubs? Uh-uh. That's not why. I just oh, listen okay. to it because I realized it was, but I realized I'm not trying to sound like y'all, but I'm trying to basically drunk and master this thing. I'm trying to figure out how can I sort of take the sound that I know that's working in the club and sort of critique it as to where I can make it like in between the sound of my own. Incorporate your own, your own shit, shit in, in it. it. Yeah. And it's like. I mean, that's what you're supposed to do as an artist. You know what I'm saying? Like. It's cool to find out what, what's popping and everything, but you still have to find your own niche within that. And that you know was the saying? biggest thing because... And, and that's the most, that's the smartest thing, thing to do as an artist. Because you want to you wanna sound current and you want to stay relevant, but what you don't want to do is sound just like somebody else. And that was my biggest yeah. thing because it's like, okay. And then a lot of people don't know, I use, I use a lot of... Eric Kramer on my vocals because my voice so deep yeah. that I have to take that depth out sometimes. And yeah. the two engineers that I deal with already know that. Right. So it yeah. ain't something. That's why yeah, I really. You, you do have that voice. Yeah. So I really don't. Like, I go record with another engineer if someone want to feature me on a song or something. But as far as what I record, it's to, in my mind, it's not going outside of them two people. I don't care if I book a patchwork session. Right. Yeah. One of these two got to come because with Because you know they know what to do. Do They yeah. already got my vocal presets in there, so they mm -hmm. already know how I like the sound. And even if they don't have the vocal preset in that particular song, they know what I like the sound like. I don't really okay. have to say anything. You know, and it's just like, I love that. 
So do you feel like your plan was effective as far as like scouting that sound and incorporating your own sound into pressure? Do you feel like you, you found you know what? what you was looking for? I didn't for? know it until pop until I started performing pop out. Now okay. I know it. At first okay. I'm like, damn. Cause see, what you gotta understand is I went through a lot of artists listening to, cause okay, I listened to Thug for a minute. Mm -hmm. My voice ain't like that. I can't I and one thing about me, I hate like putting auto tune on my voice because it because mm -hmm. it's so deep that it's yeah. hard to catch a key and auto tune nah, you, for with a, a, deep with a voice. voice like yours, you don't need that anyway. Anyway, you know what I'm saying? The most I might tell you to do is put a reverb on it at best. But right. Every time someone try to put auto tune on voice, it just never sounded yeah, right. Auto tune don't work for everybody. That's what people need to realize. And like, see, it didn't work for me. Yeah. I was one. I hear it. I'm like, bro, please take that auto tune <laughs> off. My because I'm watching auto tune try to catch a key. Right. To yeah. my voice, and you know, when it's trying to catch a key, the light just once it catch a key, the light will stop. Mm -hmm. Light never stopped. And then by the time it did stop, it's like, eh, nah. Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't it for me. So I'm like, look, scratch this. I'd rather use the telephone. I'm more of a fan of the telephone effect, like what P. Diddy used on You Can Hate Me Now. Right. Yeah. I'm more of a fan of that yeah, than that, I am. Yeah, that's oh, dope too. Yeah. Because that matches. You can use all different kind of effects. Yeah, you know and auto tune studio. just one one that works for me. And then trying to, my voice ain't really made for the rapping, harmonization, singing thing. So I left right. that. To where it was, so now it's like, well, let me listen to something else, and I'm gonna tell you, I became a real heavy, 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 heavy little dirt fan. Oh yeah, because okay. I love the way he attack a beat, like mm -hmm. the way little dirt attack a beat. You know how like I come from the era where songs were structured hook verse hook verse hook, and then song go off or. LaDirt made you come in flame that bit. Ain't no hook to start the song off. Right, yeah. He got plenty of songs. Like that yeah. song, he got threats for everybody. I love that song. Yeah, you got to switch up the arrangement sometime, man. Yeah, and he come you in, he saying? attack it. His vocal sound crisp and clear. You can understand what he's saying. So I was like, you know what? Not per se trying to sound like Dirt, but the way he attacked that motherfucker. That's yeah. why I attack pop out the way I did when I pull up, yeah. when I pop out. You see what I'm saying? I'm, I'm learning how to, oh, uh, man, what's the word? Uh, I'm, I'm trying to learn how to stretch my voice in certain ways mm. to an upper tone and back yeah. to the lower tone and yeah, yeah. keep it Project your ways. voice Project, different That's ways. the word I'm looking for, projecting yeah. in different ways. Yeah. And that's one thing I learned about dirt. He projected in a different way because if you notice some of his songs, he'll come in, mm -hmm. then he'll project it back loud. Then his whole energy will change. So I'm like, you know what? I like that. That's kind of like rap's version of harmonizing. Yeah, if, basically. If you, if you know anything about singing, you know about different keys and how they project and you know different well, tones. I'm, That's kind of like rap's version. But I'm gonna tell that. you how I actually know about keys. I'm glad you said that because I'm finna tell y'all podcast something that unless you went to school with me, you don't know this. <laughs> I play instruments. Okay. I That's played in the up. jazz band. I played the alto sax, the tenor sax, the soprano, Word? and the baritone. Okay. Well, shit, you know music then. So I've been no music. Ever since Miller Grove, shout out Miss Grove. You know about Miller Grove, notes my teacher, Miss Laird. Okay. She taught me how to play all of that and then taught me to clarinet. She was that. a music teacher? Yeah, she was my music teacher. Okay. So, I still, if, let me see. G A B C C sharp, D E D sharp, E F. L sharp, G sharp. I still remember the fingerings to the sax. That's, that's mm -hmm. what I just wanted to check to see if I still remember the fingerings. That's what's up. So I know tones. I know instruments. Yeah. So, I wish I could make, like, I got beats in my head. So, so what well, you was talking about with the little Dirk thing, like if you can learn to do that vocally. That's what I was when trying to. artists can do that vocally. vocally. Yeah, that's dope. And so like, when I was learning, to... okay. And then I know my voice get a little monotone sometimes too. So it's like, mm -hmm. like when I smoke, my voice get real deep and it gets slow. So it's mm -hmm. like, 
Yeah. Like, I've sort of learned how to project it. Like, yeah. yeah your Barry White shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm, I'm very, that's like one of my favorite so artists. So sometimes you had to tone it up. And then you so, had to be conscious of that and tone it yeah. up so it ain't deep all the time. Yeah, so that that's dope with the instruments and everything, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? That you know real instruments, real keys, like I never would have known that about you. But um what I wanted to touch on now is uh your music group, uh Double RMG. Yes, yes, you yes. You know what yes. I'm saying? Uh let the people know what that stand for and how the origin of that came about. Okay, the origin of that came from, at first, it was Rich in the Rush. Because okay. one thing about it, anybody that know me know my favorite artist is Rick Ross. So a lot of mm, okay. the way I set stuff up emulates from him, mm. which I feel in, in my book is greatness. Because ever since I, okay, I've been a Rick Ross fan since Pots and Pans, and since the first Rick Ross album with Every Day I'm Hustling on it. Mm -hmm. So with Double RMG, uh, he had some producers, I think Cool and Dre. Mm -hmm. I think that was like one of his first set of producers. And I just used to love mm -hmm. me some Cool and Dre beats. Yeah. So I that heard, ain't dope. Ain't yeah, dope. so Rich in the Rush, that's what it was, but I couldn't do Rich in the Rush. Uh, it was no way to do it in business form, like as far as the name of the car, trying mm -hmm. to spell it out and make it a music group was a lot difficult than it may sound. Right, yeah. Because it's like rich in a run. So it's like, right. you know, that's cool. And I still scream that. So you had to take the extra words out. So basically what I did was, I didn't even take the extra words out. It just got to a point where I started learning so much that I started calling it uh, Royally Rich Music Group because I consider everybody that's on my team royalty. I don't care if you're the fucking janitor mm, that clean up okay. the building. You still royalty in my eyes because I'm the type that treat the janitor just like the CEO. Mm -hmm. And I've always been like that, whether I had a job, whether it was in the streets, whether it was the one thing. That's why, truthfully, I don't really have, I don't, if somebody hating on me, I don't know about it. Mm -hmm. Because I try to keep, even if you don't like me, one thing you will do is respect me. Because right. I'm going to always keep it cordial. Mm -hmm. Even if I don't like you, I may keep distance between us. But I'ma always keep it cordial with you on a respect level, cause as long as I'm getting my respect and you get, I'm giving respect first to make sure that mm -hmm. it's you know giving back towards me. So right. that way, if I give you respect, I know that if it ever comes to that, that means you really highly disrespected me because I'm not even that type of person. So I treat everybody around me. Like royalty. That's why every time we link up, it's love and respect. Right. Because I'm going to treat you like royalty because I want to be treated. It's not the fact that I'm treating you like royalty and then I'm looking to get treated like shit. I'm treating you like royalty, respect. Because in my mind, everybody is a king in their own lane. Right. It can be, it was, if you go back in through history, and I hate, that's why I hate when people be like, I'm the only king. Bro, if you go back in history, bro, plenty of kings. Mm hmm. It was plenty of them. Now, were some more successful than others? Yes, but it's plenty of kings. So in my mind, I treat everybody like royalty, no matter their skin complexion, no matter their color. That's just who I am because I understand business now. Mm -hmm. So coming up with that, I'm like, okay, well, Royally Rich Music Group. And then what happened was I went, I got some hoodies pressed up. I went to the bank one day. The lady at the bank asked me what double RMG stand for. So I this is the first time I done ever tried to actually say it to somebody just to see peak their reaction. I'm like, yeah, royally rich music group. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you consider yourself royalty then? Yes, that's why my name King Richie. And once I seen the look on her face, that let me know, okay, yeah, I'm rolling with the right name. Right. Because one thing I realized is 
everybody wants respect. Now, does everybody know how to go about getting respect? No. But mm. everybody wants respect and wants to feel like somebody. That's why a lot of people who move to Atlanta don't really understand Atlanta when they be like, everybody not celebrities. Yes, we are. You just, <laughs> because in Atlanta, the, just, the camera's on you, in your mind, the camera's on you 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. So as long as there's a respect factor, it's like, that's what I'm looking at. So that's why, like I tell people, my team is my little cousins. No, all of them do something. Yeah, touch on uh, touch on some of the artists that's on uh, Double RMG. Man, shout out to Prophet. He got a project, Incognito, out now on all streaming platforms. Stable got a project now, Mission, out on all platforms. Okay. Nyla, four four Nyla, she got a project out on all platforms. I just feel like okay, no problem. I think if the way I look at it is, it's not really all about the money. It's, if I can motivate you to do something positive with your life, mm -hmm. hey, I feel like I'm winning. It's not because a lot of people think it's always about giving somebody some money. No, some some people don't even want your money. They just Some people just want to be heard. Some people want you to try to help them uh, put more focus on their talent. Mm -hmm. Even though a lot of the artists from Double R, they already been putting out music. One thing about everybody I just named, they been putting out music. All of us been putting out music. Like, and we all promote each other's stuff. Mm -hmm. And doing it that way solves a lot of the bullshit that a lot of artists go through about people not posting their music. We all fuck with each other, so we gonna post each other's shit. It may not be no everyday thing. We might not post you all day, every day. Mm -hmm. But... We gon' I'm gonna let you know that you have my support, right? Cause sure. a lot of people feel like, oh, I can't post them or do nothing because it's gonna mess up my shine. That's like gatekeeping almost, right? And nothing you can do gonna stop anything God got for me, right? So I'm gonna help you get to where you going because where you going. Ain't might not be where I'm going. Right. But if we can all get to this stable plateau, then and I can help you at least achieve the foundation of what you're trying to do. You know, like they a couple of them done told me they be like, I got back into music because I came back over there with that pop out. I recorded mm -hmm. pop out, recorded verified, so. Cause hearing it like he been sitting, Prophet been sitting on music. Prophet got so many songs, folks ain't even, he like me, he got songs folks ain't even heard. Cause you know, it's hard. One thing about being an artist, it's hard being an artist because sometimes you be motivated. Like you got to learn how to motivate yourself when you're an artist because right. you may not get that love you expecting to get or you mm. may not get it from who. You expecting to get it from. Right. You expecting to get it from these people, but you got a whole group of strangers over here <laughs> reposting your stuff more than the folks you fuck with on a daily basis. Exactly. So yeah, you never know where it's gonna come, come from. from. And and if something throw you a curveball or something unexpected happen, even if it's something negative, you still gotta keep going. You still gotta stay motivated. Motivated. And it's even yeah. hard for me sometimes, but yeah. it's like like, Prophet don't know, he motivated me to complete this pressure. Because, mm -hmm. you know, it's a lot going between my solo project and SWAT team. Mm -hmm. So, it's, you know, you, I try, you try to disperse the energy evenly so you don't drain yourself, but you right. end up still draining yourself. And then you be like, man, is it really going to work? Am I finna stop rapping? You know, your mind just start playing tricks on you to the point that you will even think about just quitting just because it's not happening the way you want it or how you feel it's supposed to happen. So, yeah, I did pop out in a couple of other things, but then when Lacoste Project Profit, when Profit put out his project mm -hmm. incognito, I went to listen. I'm like, okay, yeah. 
This is what the fuck I'm talking about. Yo, right. that's why I, it don't matter if I post a meme. I'm putting a little cold song behind the meme. Do mm. I care if he reposts it? No. Because as long as you know that I support you, to me it don't matter. Right. You know, a lot of people get in their feelings because some people don't repost their shit. It ain't. Man, when you showing love in this gene, when you just supposed to show the love. Yeah. Period. You know, you just, I guess it's the era I come from, which might make me a dinosaur just a tad, but it's like, mm -hmm. I'm not looking for shit in return because everything I want to do, I'm still going to do regardless of right. who on this motherfucking ship. The double RMG ship still got the stroll, you know, and the way I'm looking at it, I don't, I'm looking to turn it into a brand, honestly. Yeah. I've been playing with a couple of little things on a couple of websites as far as mugs, water bottles, t-shirts. I'm not thinking just merch. I'm thinking yeah. brand. Um, yeah. I want to be a, I want Double RMG to be a household name. And you have merch out already. Uh, yeah, hoodies. We got RMG, a couple right? of yeah, Double RMG hoodies. You know, you can hit me up, hit me on my IG, you can get your hoodie and it's just Hoodies, T-shirts for right now. Then uh, I just found a company that's going to make the double RMG slides for me, you know. So I'm just trying to get the pricing right so I know what to charge people because I'm not trying to knock nobody head off. But it mm -hmm. also still got to be remain business at the end of the day. Yes, you know? sir. So yes, sir. it's just like I'm really trying to brand double RMG because... One thing I realized what Rick Ross said, it takes 10 years to build a brand, and he's not lying because I've been doing double RMG damn near since 2015. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, matter of fact, I used to call us Rich Ma until I realized Baby starts saying, uh, Baby from Cash Money starts saying Rich Gang. I'm like, I don't even want no beef, so we just gonna dead that right there. Cause I don't want no, you know, right. I'm not saying he would have, but I just know. Right. The optics of certain shit. Right, you ain't even wanted to be close be, to nothing. Be close to nothing else, else but I wanted to. Doing. I want to separate us from every. Now I may be using a piece of Baby Blueprint. I may be using a piece of Rick Raw Blueprint or Jay Z Blueprint, but Double RMG still need to be separated because I want it to be more like a family. Like when I come around y'all, I feel like family. For sure. That's why I'm comfortable. Yeah. That's why I'll drink. That's what that's the the atmosphere we like to provide Welcome here. Welcome to the frat house. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's what we, we do, do here. Yeah. yeah. And, real, 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 and we real. appreciate you pulling up. Uh, as far as double RMG and King Richie, man, let let the people know where they can find you at, man. Man, y'all can find me at K one N G underscore R I C H I I King Richie. At Instagram, you can find once you go there, uh, you can find me on TikTok, the same name, Facebook, the same name, Snapchat, the same name. One thing about it, I keep the same name so that way you can't confuse me with nobody else. And I like to give a couple of shout outs For to sure. because my first solo show mm -hmm. was given to me by Big Pulu at Diamond. Okay. My very first photo a uh, solo show as a solo artist in 2018 going into 2019 on New Year's Eve was yeah. given to me by Big Pulu. Shouts out to Big Pulu. Shouts out to Diamond. Shouts out to Digital D and Kind Candy, my brother and my sister. Y'all make sure y'all pop up the Diamonds in the daytime, day shift. You okay. know how we doing it. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? Y'all make sure y'all come up with the frat. You know, we <laughs> locked in. You will be seeing more of me. You know, this is just a start. This is just the beginning. Um, That's what's up. I would like to shout out to all the artists on Double RMG. I like to shout out to the whole SWAT team, you know, and love for crew. JV, I see you doing your thing with them clothing line. For sure. Retro Soul, Lentini. You know, I only fuck with four clothing lines. Uh, <laughs> Lentini, Retro Soul, um, uh, damn, I just had all of them. But I love all y'all. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I want to also shout out the producer of Papa Nimi. Brother, I pray I'm saying your name right, but his name is Nimi on the beat. Produced Papa. Got a lot of bangers. 
in the talk up, that man. y'all don't even know about. Y'all need to go fuck with him on BeatStar, YouTube, link in with him. You know what I'm saying? We just trying to... We standing on business in 2024. Yes, sir, man. We Y'all catch King Richie next time he pop out, man. Y'all already know what it is, man. You watching Frat House 11 on that YouTube, man. Always spell the frat with them double A's. Subscribe, like, share, man. We out, man. Thank you for pulling up, my brother. Man, you know. pull up, pull up. When I pop out, pop out, I only try to switch what you talking about. The game fucked up. Who you talking about? I just get the bag. What they talking about? When I pull up, pull up. when I pop out, pop out, I only try to switch what you talking about. The game fucked up. Who you talking about? I just get the bag. What they talking?